now we're recording, mother fluffers. Very nice, how much? Very nice, like mm. the white door. Mate, <laughs> what? I, I'll tell you what, that looks a good background, that, Paul. Yeah, that's yeah, the one that works, the rest of them don't. I'm very impressed with that background, that's actually the wizard. So, guys, I just before we get into anything else, I wanted to ask you, based on what you've seen from Big Marcus of Tirai, um, <clears throat> how much potential do you see in him as an armor? Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll say I, I, need, I need to see competition. I need to see wins. I need to see anything. It's like one competition that I have seen him pull. He, like he wasn't he wasn't super convincing to me like that dude like unbeatable or you know more competition everything and then I can make definitive statements and d- depends on depends on who you win you know I, I have seen a lot of talent come and go this is why I'm looking different at everything I'm like okay you know okay it it doesn't s- sometimes sometimes guys will come in and they will be right like next door to you like. Like right there, it will take ten years for them to surpass you. I mean, I have seen that many times. So, so let's see how you know how he deals with Australia and then moves forward, and then then I can put you know like yeah. big dude. Every big dude has more advantage than I will if, ever have. So yeah, if if, if the travel ban lift. Um, Come along to Zloyta with us, and he'll get drilled. But he'll come. He, he, that's how he's fallen in love with it that much that he wants to go to Zloyta, and he yeah, wants to be. He part. should. He should. No. He should. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope if he does go, <clears throat> the one thing that, again, with all these big lads like that that come into the sport, I just hope that Marcus doesn't attract negative press because right. um, he's no need to. The lads up for it. Clearly up for it. You can't knock that. Every credit to the to the guy. He's up for it and he's having a go and he is genetically gifted. Uh, and I hope he goes on and becomes an absolute monster and, and does really well. I genuinely do. Seems like a nice lad and he seems like he's he's uh, he is very very strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's almost as strong as Lachlan. Listen, here's one. Can we put this to right for the fix, okay? Marcus Atirai. Yeah. Is he or is he not the most powerful novice you have ever arm wrestled or encountered in your life? Yeah, he's up there. Yeah, for real. Okay. And he's clearly a genetically gifted uh, individual. Same with Lachlan in many ways. Lachlan, you know, you can say what you want about Lachlan. Lachlan's grafting. Lachlan is trying hard. He's clearly putting an enormous amount of time and effort yep. into uh, getting much better at what he does. He's a real student of the sport. He's really keen. Yep. You know, you can't knock that. I mean, I always draw some parallels to, you know, any guy that's really, really getting after it. I mean, Paul Maiden in Great Britain, right? You might put Paul's a raw, uh, pretty crass on occasion individual, but He's a he's a very nice guy actually, and a very lovable lad. Uh, I think the world of the guy. But one thing that you've got to say about Paul Maiden is whether you love Paul Maiden or hate Paul Maiden, Paul Maiden is really really up for it. He is trying hard. You know the guy is yeah. training his ass off. He's had his own set of issues over time, 
but he's trying very, very hard to better himself in the sport and training like a complete balloon. Did anybody get in that interference? Yep. Is that just yeah, the end? Yeah. No, it, it just ended. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, 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 he's trying very, very hard and he's going at it. And I think that anybody who's doing that, hats off, you know, hats off. And he's obviously the fastest man in the world. He's the fastest one. Yeah, but Lachlan, I mean, look at his strength base and then now his ability to understand how to progress strength-wise and then his ability to apply that to, to arm wrestling and genetic backgrounds. And you pair that up with his obsession, you know, which is, is rivaling Ryan's now. Mm-hmm. There's there's absolutely no way he's not going to, you know, it's just a matter of time if he's not already there now. You get no carried along in that wave, don't you? You can't not be – I mean, if you, you've got someone like uh, Ryan mm-hmm. – who's a professional full-time arm wrestler. Yep. You're going to get carried away in that way. You cannot. Well, the beauty of Lachlan, though, too, is he comes from that that powerlifting background. Already, like, that genetic ability for that, you know, total body strength stuff, which uh, is the piece that I, I'd love to see Ryan start incorporating into his stuff. Because, I mean, I think you guys could be really mutually beneficial to each other if you – if you just kind of add, I know Lachlan has shifted his focus, but I do still, I still see him deadlifting and still see him moving major weights. And I think that's just good for the, for, for the nervous system. So here's one that I wanted to, to, to touch on. Have you guys been following the progress of, uh, of, of uh, Larry Wheels via Michael Todd's mm-hmm. update? Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. and now then, what, what do we think there, guys? What's your sort of opinions there? I, 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 I got a buddy. I got a buddy who, before, I got a buddy who lives like right down the road from me who started to dabble into arm wrestling, but I actually coached him in high school football and he's, he's, he's older now, but, um, he's like obsessed with like the strength world and obsessed with Larry wheels and is enamored by the fact that, you know, the close correlation between arm wrestling and everything. And he sends me like all these Larry wheels videos and I, for, I forget which one he sent me, um, was him working with Michael Todd and somebody else, oh, Thor Bjornsson. You know, yep. he said like, and he said, what do you think about this? And I, I, I text him back because at the beginning of Larry coming into the sport of arm wrestling, you know, he's saying, can you beat Larry Wheels? And I said, you know, at this juncture in time, I would believe that I would definitely beat Larry Wheels. Um, but the, if he continues on the path where he's at now, I, and I, I responded back to him, I think, I, I think that the level of interest that Larry has shown is going to, it's going to be an inevitable, um, that it, it, at some point in time, he's going to get good. Yeah, it, it's it, it, it's always come down. It always does come down to that level of commitment for me. You know yeah. how how keen is he or can he possibly be when he's that ingrained in everything else? You know, in strongman. Yeah. I noticed Michael's been over there doing strongman training. Um, and also, here's the other thing: how committed will uh, Michael stay when he his eyes are open to that other world and other possibilities? Because right, you never know. You know what I mean? Without being negative, you don't know how he's going to react to that. Um, right. It'll be quite interesting, but I, I would I, I would love to see a situation. There was a thing posted the other day uh, by WL, and it said, you know, could this be a future matchup? Yeah, where you had Thor and Larry. Now I'm not saying Thor's going to. Thor's got his plate full with the fight and so on and so on. Right. But if you got to a situation where down the tracks we ended up with numerous guys that are going to be uh, it genuinely interested in crossing over to arm wrestle and can arm wrestle. That yeah. would be mega, mega, yeah. Yeah. mega. I would absolutely yep. love that. Yeah, that's you know? the sort of thing that really changes the sport. Uh, athletes, if if athletes like Larry and if athletes like Thor genuinely develop the skills to arm wrestle and, and enjoy it, themselves, and that does propel us to a audience we never have seen before, and it's. <laughs> Look, that that background. <laughs> I can't talk properly with us. Start seeing lots of half naked in the background. <laughs> uh, hey, look, it's, it's, it's the uh, that's the official uh, Brisbane Centre of Manliness. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see Ryan in the middle to now. <laughs> Absolute quality. Oh, Marcus, lock on. Oh. I'm glad you cut. I'm glad you cut the bottom half of that. Uh, photo out because Lockwood has nothing going <laughs> on. Mark, he's definitely packing heat in them shorts. <laughs> Lachlan, isn't he? You haven't seen 
He is, isn't he? It's like, what yeah. other excited you so much? Yeah, the first, I didn't see it the first time, but the first comment was uh, Lachlan, Lachlan, <laughs> Uncle John uh, has outangled everyone in that, that photo. But, yeah, um, the ship from the shorts down. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's not only the fastest hilarious. man in the world. Because uh, <laughs> uh, he's not only the fastest man in the world, he's also got the biggest floppy dog. That's right. <laughs> and if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, Lachlan Adair. Fastest flop. What I see in Larry training with Michael is it's lovely that he has a uh, competent coach who is there with him. Uh, for a sustainable period of time, that he's also strong enough to uh, force Larry into good position. A lot of the people that have pulled Larry so far, even even the arm wrestlers among them, haven't been strong enough to force Larry into good position. They've, they've been able to beat Larry, but they've not been able to say, Larry, come in here, get your cup, get the drag involved, get some pronation involved, yeah. feel this. They haven't been strong enough to do that with Larry. Michael is strong enough to do that with Larry, and it's but when we're now setting the right neurological pathways for Larry to, to build a foundation to arm wrestle from. Um, and seeing that is exciting because the thing about Larry is he appears, from what I can see anyway, to, to have somewhat fallen in love with the, this process of learning how to arm wrestle. And, and, and given the strength that he has and the propensity to develop very elite strength, um, Ah, I mean, if I had to buy, if, if the arm wrestling world were shares on the stock market, I'd be buying some Larry Wheels shares. I really mm. would. Even if they're priced high. He will, he does genuinely, because of the love that he is showing and now he's getting the right guidance, it looks like to me, I would, I wouldn't put me, would, I would not be surprised if within two years from now, he was, if he maintained this, this consistency, I wouldn't surprise me if he was genuinely amongst the elite arm wrestlers of the world. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it, I, I struggle. I struggle to see that a, a situation could present itself where he'd become that focused on it. I don't know. Right. I don't know. Because he is a content creator. He's got yeah. so much... Um, so many feet in other camps, mm. of which, let's be honest, the guy's an astonishing strength athlete anyway, in a lot of areas. Um, mm-hmm. But if, you, if you're not familiar with Larry's channel, guys, get over and check out Larry Wheels' channel. I find myself just browsing through some of his old videos. I mean, the other day he had the guy, Michael, and, 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 and give some love to Michael, Monster and Mrs. Monster, get over there, check out their YouTube stuff. They've been working with stuff, um, some of the people that, that visit Larry. One of the most impressive, although I can't remember his name, was the guy who was like the old Bronx, Bronx bartenders. You know, the guy that was on the on the bars doing functional strength off the charts. Did any of you see that? They got him on the table and yeah, arm-wrestled yeah. him a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Italian guy, Italian guy, yeah? Italian guy. Uh, was he from Italy? May well have been, yes, yeah. yeah. But I'll tell you what. Christ almighty God. And he taught he taught Michael how to do a muscle-up. And it was quite good, because Michael's yeah. short. I mean, Michael's my age. He's like 47 years old. Yeah. And for him to show that kind of athleticism at whatever he weighs, 115, 120 kilos, or whatever the hell he is right now, pretty yeah. it's pretty impressive, you know? Yeah. It's pretty impressive to be able to get on there and smack out a muscle-up. Um, I, was, I thought that was quite good at that age, you know? Yeah, I don't know that. Sorry, yeah. To me about Larry, when you talk about will he love the sport enough to really go that far, um, I think if we talk about factors in life that allow you to make decisions like that, I think financially Larry is in a situation where he's earning enough that he can choose to do what he loves most. And for the moment, it appears that he loves arm wrestling most. So I don't know if that will be maintained. He obviously has a big love for a strong man. <clears throat> yeah. I was thinking that as well. And I don't think those would necessarily disappear, but but success in any field breeds motivation. And Larry's already been to the top of a number of fields. And right now he's just discovered another field in, in arm wrestling that he, I think, feels within himself could be something he could conquer. And he's experimenting with that. And, and the more he, the more feedback he feels through his hand and arm that he is on, in a process of conquering that, the, it, the more it's going to fuel the desire to go even further. And, 
and um, and no doubt, I, I would I would not surprise me at all. I'm expecting um, Larry to enter a legitimate professional tournament. I think he's going to want to do that. Yeah, I don't think it's not going to be the bottom eight under Devon. It's going to be a proper tournament. He's going to go and want that experience. Uh, well, yeah, attitudinally, be- he's got the he's definitely got that attitude, hasn't he? You know, he's got yeah. the he's got the correct yeah. attitude to be to be able to do that. Um, and if Larry, let's say Larry goes to Zlotty and and gets some experience, and Larry Larry loses in mm-hmm. Zlotty, the personality of Larry for me isn't one that goes, ah, oh, that's enough. Cool. He's going to go. No, I'm going to. I'm coming back next year. I want to. I mean, I know that there was talk of him being in the WAL in a super match. Now it yeah. would make a great deal of sense to sort of keep him safe because. Uh, for me, a, a super match with the World Arm Wrestling League is a better look because mm-hmm. then at least you can manage his opponent a little bit. Right. Somebody who's more suited to his style rather than right. him with the Wolves. For me, he's right. lucky to her. I mean this with the greatest of respect. It's a very high bar, very, very early. Yeah. You know, it's Chance of injury, shots, too. You know, and you've got... So, yeah, exactly. And it would be an, an absolute travesty if the, the lab was to get injured. Right. Like he, I needs, believe he, needs an, he needs an Aflac policy on his arm when he's arm wrestling. Seriously, I mean, like, this is his source of money. It's that, That's, to me, the scariest part of, like, you know, is he going to go all in? Because we know how much injury is involved in the sport. And when your entire, like, source of income is around you being be. strong and healthy. It wouldn't go away at all because, what, like, like well, uh, strong me, I, had, I, had this, I had this question to me the other day. Someone asked me, is your, is your arm insured? And I said, no, I said, it's all right. If I got injured, the content doesn't stop rolling. The, the, the content becomes my injury. The content becomes the story of repair, the story of getting back. And, and that's the, the brand of Larry is Larry. It's not Larry's lift. It's, it's, it's Larry is the brand now. And, and no matter what happens to Larry, if he, whatever he makes a video, people are going to watch. Yeah, yeah. I, believe, I, ju- I just it, wouldn't like to see him get hurt. Right, and, right. But, yeah, but, but, but he's still so young. Think about the chances of getting hurt in Zloty tour. I believe every match would happen so fast there wouldn't be chance for him to get hurt. Right. If he would go and compete, let's say in some amateur novice tournament with heavyweights, you know, mm. and get in those hooks, that's that's ten times okay. more. Yeah. That's when, a, when a guy's that much of a natural competitor. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah that's a you you don't get injured when you lose fast, you know. It's, it's when you tied thing. up and you make a mistake. Yeah, it's. Uh, these you guys. might get the guy who wants to pause on him, though, Ray. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. Lottie, the official photographer Lottie. in the crowd's no, no, got no, his no. camera ready. He's like, well, maybe, yeah. Well, maybe, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, and Larry yeah. thinks yeah. For clock, if Larry clocked that and thought, well, shit, natural uh, alpha popped up and he went for it like a nutcase. It only takes a yeah. second, but you know, yeah. I think. Um, Larry's a, Larry's, a, Larry's, a, Larry's a big boy, and he—I I, I trust that Larry. Larry knows what he's doing. He knows his own body, and I think oh, yeah. with, with Michael, if he gets four months with Michael, um, intensive like that, I, I think he's going to develop, for the most part, the sense of connectivity and and the integrity of his joints and all that. He's going to understand that a lot more by the time Michael's finished, and he'll be. Well, let's be honest, mate. He's been involved in uh, the strongman field. I mean. Throwing a 200 kilo Austrian oak above your head's not without risk. Yep. You know, trying yep. to pick up an Apollon's axle and bang that over. Uh, you know, all, yeah. all of these things, the the, the, sure. the stones, Atlas stones. You start people blowing biceps off yep. like it's the job in strongman, and yep. worse. So you know, there, there's definitely uh, risk attached. You know, in everything he does, his background yeah. in powerlifting. You start getting into silly heavy squatting, benching. Uh, yeah. There's a risk, absolutely. So he obviously isn't shy of that kind of thing. You know, right. I just think, from my perspective, it makes more sense uh, if he was in a one-on-one super match in arm wrestling in some respects because of the fact that he can be marketed so well. And you're mm-hmm. maximising yeah. his time there, and the show becomes Larry rather than the right. show becoming Larry's appearance in something uh, where, as Ray said, the likely is, likelihood is in something like Zlotti that he could be run over. You've got some monsters in there. Actually, that brings us on to my next point. Who has been watching? Okay, we've talked about this before. But who has been watching the ascent of Morozov? We we could have talked about him like many times with you. Uh, May. Uh, Mega. Yeah. Ah, more of May. How strong is Morozov? It's the same situation. When you see him run over guys that you know are 
pretty badass. Yeah. You, you know, like, <clears throat> Gerano smacked, every, smacked everyone in Walk Worlds. <clears throat> he smacked Gerano. And <clears throat> now, now he beat Arif so convincingly. The, the win against Gerano was when I re, when he re, I mean, and obviously you know him, but when he yeah. beat Serrano, I was like, whoa. Because to me, Serrano is another one who is ridiculously, ridiculously high level. Very, very, very high level. And Morisov slapped him about. Yeah. So how strong yeah. is that dude? Yeah. I don't he know. Looked, like super solid everywhere. Super solid just everywhere. Like, Speaking yeah. offline to Engin, and Engin was shocked by him. Yeah. Engin said he was a little pissed off with him actually because he thought he was really disrespectful. And I know there's been a lot of heat online about that. Yeah, and you know, yeah. everybody everybody does the does the thing. Um, what I would say is that if you can look past the fact that he may have been disrespectful in Lethal Arms Apparel mugs, ladies and gentlemen, get your ass over there, Lethal Arms Apparel, boom. But if you can get past the sort of disrespect that he may or may not have shown on the table to uh, Arif Ertem, the man is crazy high level. And I would like to see Morozov with the elite elites, the absolute bangers. You know, how would he do with those guys? Could he do, what would he do with Kennedy Quickvenia, with Jerry Carteret, mm -hmm. with Devon, with Mike? With, 120 you know. kilos, solid muscle. Look. Mm. Yeah. yeah, he's athletic, isn't he? He's no, yeah. he's not, he's got, you know, he's not carrying excess weight anywhere. The guy is ready to rev. And he looks like a good arm wrestler, too. Well, like he's got Neil, I feel like, Neil, you, this is a question that was sent in. Kind of close to, uh, uh, was there a question sent in about yes, what is what is considered a world title these days? And, uh, uh, this is an easy one for me. Um, a world title is the WEF World Championships right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's an easy one. Because yeah. well, okay. regardless of what our, regardless of what our well, personal biases, the best arm in the world how are. The, how do you become the number one ranked arm wrestler in the world? And that's that's, be, that's a, that, right now that's, because of the, yeah. the the route that things have gone. Um, there's a series of questions there, but if you're asking what is the hardest arm wrestling tournament in the world to win, arm wrestling tournament in the world to win right now, finger on the dot, it is the the WAF Worlds. Just is, yep. Because I, all the top nations in the world still compete there. Yep. Yeah, I have, I have had this question so many times, and everyone's like, is it WL or things like that? I always say it's WAF. First of all, like, the, if you're good and you can pass a doping test, because they will ask you to do a doping test there, and you win those 20 countries that are in your class, 20 athletes, the same way that goes hungry, yeah, you're, you're the best in the world. Some will argue Zloty, like, for past two years, Zloty hasn't been at its best, in my no. opinion. Which is and, a travesty. Yeah. Before that, I would say Zloty is very hard. But it's harder for a different reason. You know, it, we, we know the reason. There is no doping test. There's guys competing there that is there. But to call yourself a world champion, you need to win WAP Worlds right now. Yeah. IFA is not there. If like, the, no, the competition not. level is much... It's less there. So... To call yourself a world champion, in my eyes, you need to win Walk Worlds. Other way, you can you can say you won this tournament or this promotion, but it's you know it's just a promotion. It's not there. Uh, it's I, not I could, representing I the world. Since, since the end of the eighties, Ryan, the WF Worlds. Since the, the late eighties, the WF Worlds has been the hardest arm wrestling competition to win in the world. It just has. I, I, I personally had a problem with the WAF since they, they got very political with that's the That's a different that's thing. A different thing. That, that's a different thing. It's still, I, I it's wouldn't still, disagree. Yeah. The banning thing? Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. I will, ben, I, I, the most recent one was they're going to ban you if you post a photo of the plank off or Yeah, that, or that was Russian Federation, though. It yeah. was just Russian Federation. No one oh. has said anything to me. I can, like, the, the, the whole conflict, it's ridiculous. I think it's silly. We need to stop. But, like, I had talks with my guys with Federation, and I have talked with like Giannis and Blood, and they say, uh, I said, what if we go to IFA? What if this happened? And Blood said, I want to be the best guys in the world. Yeah. Best yeah. guys are not going to be there. 
I want to be known as the world champion. And it's the same thing like the people keep diminishing things like WAF because it's not as popular, you know, it's because it's European based. It's not when, when, not, when, not when in was, the uh, world. Because I, I made a comment, I made a, a poll or whatever, and I was talking about my ambition to become a mm. uh, world champion. And somebody asked, how do, you, how do you, Ryan, see yourself getting there? What would be the pathway? And they asked all the WAF questions. And my answer at the time was, I would like to win the top eight and defeat the WAL champion in the same calendar year. Um, I, that, that was for me. Um, but, but at the same time, I don't know. I'd then like to have a seat match with the WAF champion as well. And if, you like want, you if, you, if you want to call yourself a world champion, I think, you know, a world... Right. This is it. Encapsulated. It, I, 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 I get, you get bounced around us how many times you've been world champion. And you can say, some guys will say, oh, I've been 30 times, 20 times, 15 yeah. times, whatever. I get asked that same question. Can I say that I'm a multiple-time world champion? Yes. In WAF. Yeah. Now, yeah. any other title, Arm Wars, any, any, I don't care what it is. Arm Wars, WAL, PAL, anything. They are a world champion, a, a variant of a professional tournament, which is yeah, described yeah. as world champion. Yes, the title carries. But does that represent you as the world champion, the best? Not necessarily. The hardest That's tournament is the one. My personal goal is to, to have the majority of votes when the poll, when the, when the question is put to the arm wrestling world, who is the best 95 kilo arm wrestler on the planet? I'd like to win that. That, that for me is more important than, than any, any league title. That's, that's the thing that drives my motivation. Well, no, when, the, uh, when the when the split that's before different, that's different, yeah. But the big benefit the last time the World Arm Wrestling Federation split was that mm. nobody was banned. There was no banned. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, from my exactly in line with what Ray said, when that happened, it was like, oh, you must be kidding. We're splitting. What the, f-? you know? Yeah. Because yeah. you're not financed. The biggest problem was you had needed additional time off work. It was additional cost to go there to do these things. But my, yeah. uh, my, for me and the guys that train with me. We we went to both. <laughs> so yeah, that, I know that, I know many people we did, who did. Yeah. We, did, we, did I, we went to both and won both, but literally went to okay. Well, if you can't, if if the split right, well, who's going to be there? Who's going to be there? You know, there might be a couple of different. But the funny thing is, a lot of the guys who were the very best in the world went to both because they had the same desires that we had. They wanted to be yeah. the best, and they weren't they weren't going to get to a situation for me. You weren't going to get to a situation. So, ah, you only won because this dude wasn't there. But that. You wanted to go to the Europeans, the Worlds, and at any of the tournament, if somebody said, oh, there's this guy and he's better than you, okay, right. let's go to his house. Let's knock on his door. Let's That's do the thing. I, I, for me, I'm very blessed in that I, I, because I get to call it a career and because the source of my income is, is YouTube videos at the end of the day, I, 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 I see myself as an opportunity to build my own ladder. And I, I am someone who will knock on the buyer's door someday if that's what it takes for me to get a legitimate match. And to be clear, um, not in an adversarial manner. Before everybody jumps yeah. on Ryan in the comments, is a, we're not talking about in an adversarial manner and saying, oh, we can be, I can beat you. It's the... Yeah. I, would like an I want to arm wrestle you, Pursue mate. it. Yeah, yeah pursue I want to arm wrestle you. You're the man. I want the chance. And I, I sort of get the situation that Michael was talking about. Michael Todd, when he said, you know, the, the most annoying thing about the COVID virus is the fact that I feel within myself... This was on his last interview. I haven't seen that guy's go check out Mike's interview. And he said, I feel within myself that right now I'm better than I've ever been and I'm peaking and I am ready. I'm ready right now for anyone. I'm better than I've ever been right now. And just as I get to that stage, the world goes down and, and I can't arm wrestle. And for my whole life, for 30 plus years of arm wrestling, I've pursued being one day a man. And right when I feel like I'm ready, I can't friggin' arm wrestle. He said it's so frustrating. So he wants that match, that validity. You know, he just wants that match. I feel like I'm at my peak right now, and I and the same thing. I just all I want to do is arm wrestle people that on paper are way better. Mm-hmm. But my level has changed, so I can I can relate. And anyone who's been trying hard in the past can't feel the same way. Sure. Yeah, well, I think like, we're all in that boat. Yeah. We're all in that boat because all we're doing is training. I mean, I, I haven't competed in like eight months or something, and 
I'm training the same way. Like I've got to think I'm getting stronger. And um, it's 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 either it's either you go to a local tournament, you know, or it, it, yeah, it's frustrating for everybody right now. It's frustrating for me because I'm about to like I feel like I'm in like the age prime, you know. I'm hit, I'm hitting that age prime, and I'm wait I wasted a year. Yeah, I, I I said, man, it's honestly it's hard to fight like some level of depression during this stuff because all of our you know opiates that that you know that we use as far as the release and everything, competition opiates aren't available. So and there's, there's I, always we're all suffering. Going to be that question around the who's the very best in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, on what day, mother fluffer? Right. You know what I mean? Because right. it, it, what it comes down to basically is there might be five guys, ten guys who, in the world, given the right set of circumstances, could win a tournament, could beat the other one. Um, yep. And you can always make that argument. It's like you know the classic thing about statisticians can make things look out any way you want if you, you've got enough and you've got enough area to draw. That's a very true statement with a lot of sports. But, and and it, it creates very engaging arguments. But it's extremely difficult to make any kind of argument that states that, you know, um, someone is the very, very best in the world without two elements. Number one, longevity. And number two, frequency of, of, of proof. Body of work. I'm much more proud about being in the top three at the WAF World Championships for like a 12 to 14 year period than I am about having won it a couple of times. If you can go to the, if you can say, well, I competed over, you know, like a 12 to 14 year period at the EAF and, and WAF Europeans and Worlds, and I was always in the conversation. I was always on the podium from that period to that period. You know, that's why I believe such a strong case can be made for, for Engin, for example, because, you know, right. his, his body of work at the time, because he was so obsessed, was vast. He was competing everywhere yep. and anywhere in North America, in Europe, against anyone at various weight classes. Cobra Rhodes is another one. Andrew Cobra Rhodes gets overlooked so much for me because he was, at one time, I'd go to a competition in London, at the London Bus Emporium, for example, in the, in, in the early 90s, late 80s. Who do I see? Cobra Rhodes. I then go to Houston, Texas in 1991, and who's there? Cobra Rhodes. I go to Vladi Kaskav, Russia in 99, and who's there winning? Cobra Rhodes. Go to the Harley Pull, the original Harley Pull, who wins? Cobra Rhodes. Mother Fluffer was everywhere and anywhere, against anyone, yep. and was always a bad man. And that, that to me, it's pretty unarguable. I, 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 I want to I say something like, like, being in close contact, like like what Neil said, like if you will ask Giannis, how many times have you been a world champ? He will say four times. If you and and he because he doesn't count anything else. No. If you ask Engin how many times he has been world champ, at, at eleven something, because he doesn't count his master wins. He just counts senior WAF title. Correct. If I if I ask you, you will say the same. Yes. And that's the difference of everyone who has done it. Guys that hasn't done it don't understand the level, the, the the need to be super high level to win WAF Worlds, and and sometimes guys will win it once and they will just disappear, and sometimes it's a fluke, but most times, like you said, Neil, consistently through the years, you know you're the top dog and you know your place in the world, and everyone knows your place in the world. Saying like it's talking about like. For for me, WL is not that. No. It's, it's different because it's invitational. Be- mm-hmm. Because credibility is built on guys who you beat. So mm-hmm. if I'm five times Riga Open champ, five times in a row, and someone comes and he beats me, does that build his credibility in a world or in a... No, it just builds his credibility right here because he beat me. If that's Giannis that he beat... Giannis on his prime, you know, he beats Giannis. That builds different credibility. So, WL right now, it's the same roster. And looking at the guys, because I had a few days this conversation, I'm like, okay, this guy is number one, number two, but who has he beaten to get there? You, Okay, okay, this guy. We know heavyweights. 
Mm. In lightweight, there right now is just Giannis. I say with incredible credibility. Everyone else has built their credibility inside this realm, not outside. And yeah. I, but maybe someone will hate on me for this, but these are just the facts. And if you go to Zloty Tour, it's different. <clears throat> the past two years, Zloty Tour hasn't been the Zloty Tour. You know, correct. In- it really hasn't, and that's a travesty. Yeah, because it because as as Ray says, it was the it was that event. You know what I mean? Like in in in, in um in the nineties, we did the arm wrestling old school. They'd be coming out very shortly, guys, on the Yukon Jacks. Okay. Now at that period of time, it is fair to say that the Yukon Jacks represented the very highest level. It was the Nemiroff Stroke Zotti Tour of its day. Are you with me? It was the the everybody was there. Johnny Walker, John Brzezink, Cobra Rhodes, Dave Patton, Alan Fisher. Gary Goodrich, Jerry Cat, everybody. I mean, the other day we were looking at a list in the heavyweight division at the Yukon Jacks, right? Dave Randall is like seventh or eighth. <laughs> Dave Randall was fucking eighth. You had like Cleve Dean, Gary Goodrich. Yeah. I mean, it read like a who's who of legendary arm wrestlers. You know? Ridiculous. We went to the 95 uh, Yukon Jack, and you had guys like Jason Vale, Denny Dupreel, Dave Patton, Serge Usero, if you don't know Serge Usero, you can well should. Bad mother fluffer, let me tell you. Svetan Gashevsky, uh, Vepkia Sam Karadze. But just a uh, Andreas Ronstrom. Just an absolute, who, who school yeah, an absolute yeah. list of holy shit monsters. And they're all there in that competition. So at that time, the Yukon Jack was the kitty. It was the one. And the fact that the whole split and banning and political scenario has detracted from a from an event that was personally maybe my favourite event in the world. There's Lotty Tour. I loved it for years. I was involved with it for years, and even when I wasn't, I love it. Loved it. I'm gutted. <laughs> I was sick when that suddenly all those massive name matchups that you wanted to see. Aren't going to happen because uh, this yeah, but this guy's in Russia, he can't attend. Or this guy, oh uh, yeah, he's in Kazakhstan and he won't be going. Or he's in, you know, it's fucking sickening. It'll come, guys. Like Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Sorry, like for you to be recognized as number one, if, if that's your plan, just winning tournaments constantly, placing top three constantly, mm. beating guys that has built their credibility. And that will yeah. put you on a spot. You you don't even have to be, you know. Like I have so many I, co- like comments about Vrej because and, and like Vrej should be the best one of the best pound for pound. I'm like, even though you believe that he has just one world title, just yeah. one world title, and we're talking about the high school have ten. It's it's just you see this small part of armor sling and you believe that's the whole deal. He's amazing. I know we all know. But that's, you, you know, the line and consistently, consistently beating everyone. He might get there even without there, be, 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 without those titles, because consistency is the key, in my opinion, like Neil said. And the, and the, and the funny thing is, going back to what we were talking about earlier, about that recognition for world number one. If somebody's your fan, uh, they're going to recognize you. If they're not your fan, they're not going to recognize you. Yeah. Where, however much you want them to, it's very, very yeah. difficult to do that. Yeah. Despite the fact that, you know, it may have been harder to win the the the, the, the regional championships in, in Utah than it was to win the WAF Worlds at one time. Because, you know, it just happened to be where John Brzezink uh, <laughs> lived. Right. You know, so John Brzezink could match up against anyone and everyone for a period of time, which was what drew so much credibility to him globally, because John loved to arm wrestle and would be very active internationally. When the PAL cracked on and we started bringing him over for the big shows there, and he would face dominant WF champions, uh, guys like Dima Kochev, who was a killer, and, and, and John had put the, the sword to him. He'd face, you know, Taras. He'd face anybody you wanted. It didn't matter. Yeah. And you would get that same result over time because of that frequency of competition against that elite, elite level at any weight. In North America, he's beating guys like Jerry, Richard Lupkus, Gary Goodridge, 
over time, when you've done it for 20 odd, 30 odd years, you've got to take your hat off to the dude and think, ah, oh, yeah, he's probably the man. He's probably the dude. You know, it's not that. What it's not a. It's not a. Even, even, a day. Even, it's not even, that even, day. Imagine even now, people don't understand. They, they see some like, yeah, Davon's the goat. Davon is the goat, or Tiplankov is the goat because he beat John. He beat John that day. So I don't, I don't believe when people say something, I'm like, show me consistently throughout the years, show me results, show me your placement, show, this is the same argument we're talking about with, with schoolboy, you know, he's like, so good, so great. I'm like, where are the results? Yes. You know, if there are results there, yes, there's no mm-hmm. results. No. So Ryan, please. Like that, a career, a career changes, doesn't it? I mean, you can't not get a little twinge of, for, for, I mean, I used to always, it doesn't really bother me now, but sometimes the, the competitor inside here would be annoyed when I'd see some footage of a, a tournament and some, somebody had posted a thing and said, oh yeah, here's me beating Neil in 2006. Or yeah. And I'd be, <laughs> and in inside me, you've got to take yeah. it as a compliment a little bit because yeah. they still see that as good. But inside me, I'm still thinking, motherfucker, please. Yeah. You know, yeah. really. I mean, yeah. it'll say, you know, and it'll say in the men's 110 class on the month. And I'm thinking, well, that should say it all. I've got back tits. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm focused on arm wrestling. Do I look like I'm training hard? Do I look like that's the real me? No, that ain't me, dude. You know, you think a fat guy with an elastic waistband who used to pull. No, now, if somebody says that, you know, I, look at winning records, you might say that on the, on any given day, Richard Lupkus may represent the very best arm wrestler that's ever put his elbow on a table. Because body of work over a short period of time, he had crushing victories against unbelievable opposition. Unbelievable opposition, you know. The fact that he beat Ed Arnold in an absolute screaming death war before John Brzezink faced him in over the top final and had a war with Ed Arnold, you know. Now then, John beat Richard straight off the back of the match with Ed Arnold and then went on to beat Ed Arnold in the final. The, the other point you've got to put in there as a counter is that, that, that Richard Lucas was a giant and John Brzezink was weighing like 85 to 90 kilos. Yeah. <laughs> mm, you know. So there's always the, the punch, counter punch in that kind of decision. A guy that rates Gary Goodridge will say, Gary Goodridge at his absolute peak. It's like the barbershop scene in, in Coming to America, you know. Mm-hmm. Big Joe, do what you Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Joe was 175 years old. Joe, yeah. Joe was 170 years old. <laughs> yeah. It's that, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're a Gary Goodridge fan, and opposite side of the table's Alexi Vavoda's brother, Alexi Vavoda's brother's like, fuck you. Alexi yeah. Vavoda in 2004 beat your, you know, it, who, who do you want? Who you got? <laughs> who, who have you got, right? Let's go, you know, in our four. Who is the best arm wrestler? And I'm not talking about the best, just who at their peak on any given day, whose peak form at any time ever represents the, the highest level of arm wrestler ever to do it? I, 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 I can't get past it, John. Okay. I think despite the size difference, I think the killer, the fast, the, the, the aggressive... And when, when was it, shot. mate? What what year? Do you put... Uh, 2006, Paddy Rosmanov? No, it, it's early, John. I don't know the year, but it's early, John. When I asked John, his peak, he showed me a photo of him in the garage, young and blonde and looking yeah, like a... Yeah, the same thing. Yeah, and he said that was it. So I, I'd, I'd back that, John, if I had to, over anyone. Who you got, Paul? I mean, I've been, the more I've been uh, interacting with Angan Terzi and looking up more stuff on Angan, and I'm also a believer in, like, when you talk about, like, the best, I, I think pound for pound has to come in there. I know Angan might might not be as considered as versatile as John, but when you talk about, like, the activity level and the body of work, I don't know if he is the best, but to me he is the best inspiration of that. Mm-hmm. Um and, and and I'm still learning on him. I can't act like I know everything about him. You know, I'm still who's, researching. Who's your, who's your man for 
if everyone's yeah. peak to winning the tournament. If everyone time travelled to their peak and then and had if a it was and if it was not a oh, tournament, no, if it no was week, not a no week cap. The very peak. No, no week cap. No week cap. Oh. No week yeah. cap. Very peak of any individual ever against strongest any other star, individual. Strongest in a one-on-one. ever. Yeah, strongest ever. So if you took the very best oh. of all of 2004 and put him against the very best Gary Goodridge from 2006 or 2005, who wins? The question is, did we ever see a true 100% peak um, Soplinkov? That who, that's who kind of comes to my mind. I mean, you know, there's been criticism of his technical ability and everything, and I get that. But, like, when you say the strongest at peak, I just find it, uh, I find it hard to believe if that guy ever got to his exact peak and did he, if he were able to compete on that day, um, at his highest peak technical ability as well. He, he's the one that just kind of jumps out to me. I could be wrong. But I mean, everybody can say John and I feel I, like that's, so, that's beating a dead horse. I'm so sad we didn't see Devin pull the plank off around that 2008 period or whatever it was. Mm. Uh, well, that would have been a good match to have some data on. Yo, mate, the, the, this is the point. Uh, before we go any further, who you got, Ray? I, I would say, I would say from everything I have looked at, you know, e- extensively, I would say John. But I have to, I have to say to John, like, give him anybody at any time, six rounds, and I say, John, this is the most important match of your life. I believe John has the tool to destroy everyone. If 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 it's like I, I say like you're gonna face the best supply call there's possible, we're gonna give you a, all the money. I think he has ability because uh, I believe when he's dedicated, it's 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 not even close him and Travis. You know when we say Travis dedicated is a beast, I believe John dedicated is even something else with all the technical mm-hmm. knowledge, with all the capabilities that he has on the table. So. I know it's, but I'm a true believer to that. Like looking at his like dominance through the years and guys that he beat, and saying like everyone's like, yeah, but he he lost to this guy. Yeah, he was 50 years old, man. Come on, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. come on, yeah. That, yeah. So I'm like, give, give give me the best variation of John, dedicated. I, I don't believe any heavyweight has a chance. I, I really do. Six rounds, six rounds. Yeah, for one match, everyone has a chance. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, 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 so the point I was trying to make was just in us three, they mm-hmm. were all into the sport big time. There would be a different opinion. I mean, for me, the best arm wrestler of all time is definitely John Brzezink. The highest peak performance of any individual of all time. I'm going to go with Richard Lutkus mm-hmm. at his absolute peak because I've seen Richard demolish a lot of guys. And I don't mean just beat. I mean beat like a hot knife through butter. Just where, where like, is, like where a is, bum. Where does against Andrew guys like Gary Goodridge. Guys like John. Even though John was smaller, but this is at the time that he was telling Ryan that he was, was at his, you know, his very best. Whether he really was or not, I don't know. Would John Bigger uh, in 2006 have made it a different match? I don't know. I don't yeah. know. But what so I'm what, saying is, watching Richard sigh through someone, when the guy uh, was at his, when he was at his peak, when you're looking at a 30 year old Richard Lucas, and he's just crushing dudes, you think to yourself, my God, when he's just literally basketball slapped Gary Goodrich. <laughs> and I'm talking, poof, like, you know, and then John comes up, poof, just a, like they're not there. And you think, holy, where, what was his level like that day? Where was that guy? Then, right. when he's 175 years old, <laughs> he comes and he pulls Dennis Siplenkov at the Arnold. Yeah. Dennis yeah. gets inside with him and Dennis, <laughs> holy. And when you speak to Dennis after, Dennis is like, I can't even imagine that dude when he was 30. Yeah. And the di- one of the biggest difference was that when he was 30, he wasn't this guy. He was lightning in a bottle, like just terrifyingly fast, terrifyingly direct, and and clearly incredibly strong. You know, and I watched him pull against John Brzezink at the Arnold's and, and beat John. I watched him pull 
against Ron Bath at the Arnold's when Ron was solid as rock. And, you know, Richard must have been, at his absolute peak, a total weirdo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I see that. And it's hard to... Neil, what about, what about Pushka? Tell me, does, does Pushka, for me, Pushka is probably the guy I, I would have said is second for me. But Pushka uh, isn't that high for me. I, I have Pushka as an incredible, uh, an incredible tournament arm wrestler. And he's one of the most effective arm wrestlers that I've ever seen. Do I believe that his absolute peak was representative of the absolute peak? Yeah. No, yeah, no. For me too. For me too. Yeah. I love Andre. I absolutely love Andre, but I'm not going to... I've got to say what I genuinely believe, and I, and I don't believe that's the case. I think there are guys that would have been problematic for him all the time. He had, he had some weaknesses. Yeah. yeah. As does as does everyone. Um, you know, as I said to you earlier on, there are so many guys that are that go overlooked in that conversation. Uh, Dave Patton, as a young man, was a freak. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Johnny Walker. A young Johnny Walker. You got to remember when Johnny Walker started taking ass whippings. Johnny Walker was getting on, you know, he's late. Well, you know, was, what, what, what age did what age did John Patton bow out? He was still Dave, in his thirties, wasn't he? Dave Patton, yeah. D- Dave was. Uh, I mean, Dave Patton was so good that Dave's brother Ray Patton, who was mm-hmm. really good, nobody mm-hmm. knows about. You yeah, never just like, know just like John. Him. Ray Patton was yeah. a beast, like really, yeah. really good. Bill Brzezink. People never talk about Bill Brzezink. Yeah. You know, you've got Bill Brzezink who goes to the World Championships, hangs up and beats uh, Ireka Gurkiani from Georgia, who was a friggin' monster. Bill Brzezink was a fabulous arm wrestler. You've got guys like Cobra Rhodes that beat Bill Brzezink and beat John Wa- Johnny Walker at one point. In it. So, beat Engin Terzi. If you go to the Harley Pool, Cobra, and that was a strong ass engine. That was an engine that posed on Kevin Bongard, for Christ's yeah. sake. And then lost to Cobra. Yeah. So how good was the peak Cobra? Yeah. Any day, any day, any given day, on any Sunday, mother fluffers. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yep. What and I got Angushevsky hang up the border was something I'll never forget. Watching you know, literally a seventy-one kilogram, and I know he was seventy-one kilograms specifically because I saw him on the fucking scale. That's a fact. I was at the weight, watched him on the scale. He weighed seventy-one kilograms, and he was pulling the WAF two twenty or two forty-two champion of the world at the Nemirov Cup. We were signing through people. And Svetan Gashevki comes out and hangs his ass up badly, weighing 71 kilos. And I remember that day thinking, <laughs> this one is real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, try and get your head around that. 71 kilo dude hanging up the border. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at that video right now. <laughs> <laughs> but for real. You know, and then you think, you know, Svetan calmly walks backstage and I'm just like, where do I begin? <laughs> that was mm-hmm. impressive. Yeah. That was impressive as hell. You know, I'm not saying that it was a peak Vavoda. No, it wasn't. Don't be throwing shade at me saying, oh, that, but Vavoda got stronger. Yeah, I know. But Svetan was 71 kilograms. Right. And what I'm getting to at is... To me, that's one of the most impressive things, is the ability to give weight up and still be dominant. That that I, I've just, I've always been enamored with the pound-for-pound pound idea. You it's know, amazing. Heavy, heavyweights get all the, they get all the credit, and as they should, you know, because they are the strongest nine times out of ten. But a guy that can transcend weight classes and still be extremely comfortable, to me, that's more impressive. Always has been. It's... And, it's one of the things that I'd love to at some point, and I'm trying with the Deep Inside series to some extent to expose, is the depth of excellent arm wrestlers that, that are out there. I mean, the fact that people, you never hear so many guys that were mega pullers. Anatoly Skudayev, 
people don't talk much about Sharon Remez. I wish, Ryan, I really wish, you'd known Sharon Remez in the early 90s, late 80s. Mm -hmm. Honestly, mate, he would have blown your friggin' mind. You talk about weirdos, strip freaks, like your Khaleds and your your, your Marcus. That dude is a weirdo. Complete and utter, where did you make that one from, weirdo? Right. No, I've heard, I've listened to his deep in, deep in the mind of, uh, and yeah, I mean, I was, the, the Israel club tried to get a match from myself and Sharon, um, and it almost was able to happen. It was, it was only that my daughter went into ICU that it didn't happen. But, um, yeah, I, 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 so when I was, when I, when that match was somewhat coming about, I was watching Sharon Rubber's videos on listening to deep in the mind of and, and going, and, and I talked to John Milne and I talked to Devin Larratt about Sharon and they're all like, dude, we're back in Sharon to beat you. <laughs> so when, the when, 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 Sharon, when Sharon was at his best, I mean, I mean this in the nicest possible way. Sharon's untouchable now because he's an old man and he's not really focused and he's not. When Sharon in the late 80s, early 90s, that dude was incredible. Yeah. He was yeah. incredible. You know, you're just a freak, a weirdo. Didn't matter who you put in front of him, it was like consummate ease. Just side right. film, like, like they weren't anybody. Just, it, like it, it always, cool. it always, it always enamors me to see, you know, a lightweight, you know, even if it's local area, who can win an overall, you know, and let's say it's like a, not a real deep overall and the heavyweight gets down, but he's worn down a little bit. Like I've seen Sam Harris do it at local tournaments a lot. And, uh, I've fallen victim to that, to him in overalls. Um, and that, that blows my mind when a guy who can walk around at 154 just has that much side pressure and strength. And that's just at a local level. I can only imagine, um, like when Angan when was in his prime, smoking everybody in big tournament overalls. You yep. know, it's incredible. And, and got one guy that Engin's spoken to me about quite a bit and that I, again, I'm gutted. There's, there's, I'm going to throw two names out here actually because there's, there's two really amazing pullers at this time. Um, the first one is uh, Jaime Jose Saint-Germain from, uh, Jaime was incredible in a hook Jaime was a beast and you'll still see Jaime knocking about now he's still obsessed with the sport does a lot in Spain but when that was when, when he was young we're talking 60, 65 kilo puller and the amount of big men and I'm talking big men 120, 130 but bring who you want that I would see that little motherfucker slap into a hook and mm-hmm. smile at when they revved up on it. They'd be like, and he'd be like, <laughs> and then right. just a unit. You've never seen anything like it. And the other kid, Lorenzo Villa. I can't, why there isn't a statue of that mother in Spain somewhere, I don't know. Because Lorenzo <laughs> Villa looked like he was literally, he looked like a 12 year old boy. If Lorenzo <laughs> Villa had shown up at your front door and delivered your paper, you'd think, it's about right. And he wasn't even on a full-size bike. The guy was like 55 kilos. He looked like he lived off celery and thin water. Right. God damn, what a puller. So, get, think, talking pound for pound, this kind of brings me into something that um, Gary Roberts has been talking about doing. I kind of wanted to float it by you guys because I know Travis gives him a lot of crap about it on the show because he doesn't like it or whatever. Um, and I think we're going to pilot it here um, on February 6th in PA. He wants to do an overall, which is like 15 to 20 guys. Not an overall, but it's a formatted King event. Yes. Uh, you probably already heard it, but he hasn't figured out, like, the rules and how he wants to do it. He's talking about either giving it a time or giving it several rounds through. Um, weighted from heaviest to lightest, and you tally your wins throughout of either a period of time or three runs through with 20 guys of a, of a pretty good caliber. How do you think that that would play out for true, like a test of endurance? I don't, like, I don't think there, it's any there indication a for of a light weight to win it. Um, I, I don't think it's a, a clear indication of anything, but I think it's made for brilliant entertainment. Yeah. Right. I, I think yeah, from, from a get exhausted. Yeah. Right. As it's a, just as a regrouping. Hey. Well, like, like there would be, it would be loose rules and it would have to move quick, you know, and it would have to be like the opportunity where you foul guys out for stalling. Um, so like, like this is kind of what we're, do you think, I guess really what I'm getting at? And the question is we haven't piloted it yet, but 
do you think that there's an ability for a lighter weight dude to tally up the most victories? Yes. Possible. Depends yeah. on the level of fatigue coming out of depends, the middleweights the, and heavyweights when they meet. And depends on right. that dude. Right. Like, that's the question is, like, does the heavyweight go through, like, six like six tough matches and then he's shot for the rest of the three rounds? To answer that another way, right, let's say that we put together a fantasy league, fantasy league of that exact scenario where right. we pick 16 of the greatest arm wrestlers of all time. Right. Okay. And within that mix up, going from super heavyweight down to bantamweight, somewhere sat in there is Dave Patton, Cobra yeah. Rhodes, in a descending order, Dave Patton, Cobra Rhodes, Engin Terzi. I'd yeah. put a lot of money on one of them to win it. Yeah. It'll be yeah. one, one so, of those three guys. In, in, in between. Yeah. In between. Explosiveness yeah. plays so much of a role, too. You know, if, if a lightweight has good endurance, great technique, and very, very fast, I feel like a lighter weight dude in the later rounds could just start cleaning up. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm recovery sorry, time is a huge thing, too. Like, I mean, I, you guys, I mean, Ryan, you know how you pull a practice. You know, you know what your re- recovery time is. You know kind of what time you need. Like, if you gas out one round, somebody else gets up to the table. How long do you need to come back and be formidable? That I think that's kind of what, what Gary's trying to extract from this. Like you said, I don't think it's necessarily anything to be proven. Like, wins and losses in that shouldn't be held against people's uh, record, per se. But I think it's a, it's, it's a cool concept. And I, I, my, my gut says that a, that a middleweight, or a heavyweight would win it, but mm-hmm. the question is, can a, can a legit lightweight do it? And I think when you talk about those three guys, you know, <laughs> on any given day, right? Well, I know that certainly, uh, may, maybe maybe Ryan, but certainly Ray can attest to this because he's lived through it, uh, seen it at the, at the feeble powering arm wars. We used to do battleground format and baby battleground. Now, the battleground format uh, was eight men. And particularly in the battleground format, you would this would show exactly that. You could get on one side of the bracket, okay, four absolute killers. On the other side of the bracket, four guys that were clearly in a lower tier than this four. So your second four would be slightly lower level. They go at it hard in round one, and you, the idea was you would put the worst nightmare of any arm wrestler, his first match. Is going to be the one where everybody's like, oh, God, you know, what was really evident was then when those guys got past round one and crossed over and would face each other, suddenly everyone's in a war. Right. It's just when that little bit of fatigue yep. gets in, when you've gone past your elastic limit, yep. it was it's it's just crazy. Then it just, yep. God knows what can happen. And it was just right. an exciting format to watch. Really entertaining. And I've never seen a format that threw up so many screaming career-ending death wars. When right. people just came off the table, like, and they needed, when they wanted to go for a piss, they needed a stunt up. Right. Ace. You know? What the hell is that noise? What's, Everybody got what's that? Right, Ryan's flying right now. He's flying. He's piloting the jet. He got the window open. <laughs> we are passing Lisbon on the right side of the plane. <laughs> Those are the eight men. And there they are. You can see them from the plane. The eight men in Brisbane are visible from the plane. Look down right now. They are so huge. <laughs> Everybody, get your cameras out. <laughs> I love the video. I come back and you guys are mocking Brisbane. What's going on? <laughs> hey, pilot jokes. Hey, pilot all you jokes. need to know is Brisbane t-shirts, ladies and gentlemen, will be available shortly through the Supernatural Strength Channel. I believe, guys, we're at an hour in. We probably need to leave it at that. Fix, yeah. hey, hey, I, wanted just to, I wanted to say Please. one thing before we go. Um, if, if Neil, if you if you lift an eyebrow, mm-hmm. Ray, you do this, and I do that. We've all got the exact head attire that is in the poster: the hat, the sunny. <laughs> yeah, hair, yeah. Well, that's that microphone. And um, Sienna, mate, you are the man. Yeah, I just so, need my yeah. jaw to get a little bit wider. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for your, for your neck to look like this. <laughs> yeah, well, at, at one point that was probably an accurate depiction of my neck in football days. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, I want to say a massive thanks to the co-host of the show, Rolly Royce. It's Ray. I want to say a massive thanks to Ryan Blue Bowen, the mother-loving owls, and the white oak, Paul Lynn, Lethal Arms, 
Guys, get yourselves over to these lads' channel. Get yourself over to Pound to Pound. Links are in description. Get yourself over to Lethal Arms. Get yourself over to... The voice of arm wrestling. <laughs> the tips on hairstyling and arm wrestling technique. <laughs> longevity. It's longevity. And when, until we see you next time here on the Supernatural Strength, guys, take it easy, peeps. What grabs your eyes on that, if anything? <laughs>